Okay, so my research is uh, confined to healthcare, um, and I'm an economist, so I'm interested in the economics of healthcare. Healthcare, of course, is important because it's one of the largest um, expenditure sectors in most countries in the uh, wealthier parts of the globe. And one of the major questions I've been interested in is looking at what drives healthcare expenditure. Um, for the past 30 to 40 years, in most of the wealthy OECD countries, healthcare expenditure growth has, has, has been higher than GDP growth. So that means that the healthcare expenditure sector has been growing faster than the other sectors in these wealthy countries and displacing expenditure from these other sectors. So it's an interesting question as to why um, healthcare expenditure growth has continued to be maintained at higher levels than GDP growth. And that leads on to the obvious question as to what are the determinants of healthcare expenditure growth. The issue with that is that for all of the variables that we can control for, demographic growth, uh, income, insurance payments. Once you've controlled for all those factors, there's still a large residual of healthcare expenditure growth that's left unexplained. And that appears to be associated with uh, a growth in healthcare technology. Now, economists aren't particularly um, good at explaining what drives healthcare technology. Um, and that's really one part of my uh, research has been focused on trying to explain that. So we've looked at aggregate levels of healthcare expenditure and seen how different healthcare systems have uh, adopted and diffused healthcare technologies. And it uh, turns out that from our findings that uh, perhaps not surprisingly, uh, private healthcare insurance systems, so systems like the United States used to be at least, uh, uh, tend to adopt healthcare technologies early and diffuse them rather faster than the publicly funded centralised healthcare systems such as most of the European systems. And the UK, which is very centralised in its, or used to be very centralised in its healthcare expenditure, tends to um, not adopt new technologies very quickly or rapidly and doesn't diffuse them very rapidly. Now, that again is maybe perhaps not surprising, but uh, whether it's a good or a bad thing, nobody really knows. The, the next question, of course, leads on to, well, what do we mean by healthcare technology? That seems to be driven itself by uh, healthcare R&D. And another strand of my research has been looking at uh, healthcare research and development to see whether there's any return to healthcare R&D. There's been a bit of work in this area, but not very much, and most of it has been based on simulation exercise, where they've looked at making assumptions and seeing whether or not R&T does return any productive output. So I've looked at this statistically over a 30 to 40 year period within the UK, and found that the rate of return to R&D in terms of increased life expectancy it's positive, that's the good news, but the bad news is it's a very, very small return. So whether or not we're actually being very efficient in our use of R&D is an open question. So that's one strand of my research. Another strand has looked at the hospital sector within the healthcare sector because hospitals, of course, are still a dominant um, provider of healthcare. And I've been particularly interested in looking at the uh, hospital reforms, healthcare reforms, which have been enacted within the UK over the past 10 to 15 years, where uh, the reforms have focused on giving patients more choice and also um, making the split between purchasers, the GPs and the providers' hospitals, in such a way that the hospitals have to compete for funds from the GPs. Now, that competition for funds under a very tight budget constraint has uh, been associated also with a fixed pricing regime, the introduction of essentially diagnostic related group pricing, which says that prices for hospital services are attached to a particular form of hospital output. And under that fixed price regime, what we've been testing is whether or not as hospitals compete under fixed prices, 
for funds, the impact that that has on hospital quality. And we found that under a fixed price regime, the uh, hospital quality appears to increase. Now that leads to a second question on this research strand, which is essentially about what do we mean by hospital quality? And we've been trying to uh, statistically define hospital quality both within and across hospitals. And that's led to a number of pieces of research and outcome. It turns out that not only does hospital quality increase, but under fixed price regimes with competition for funding, uh, it appears that the um, efficiency of hospitals also increases. Length of stay, the throughput of patients through the hospital itself has quickened under this competition for funds under these new regimes. And finally, the last piece of research that I'm interested in is um, the objective of pricing pharmaceutical products. So how are pharmaceutical products priced? Um, and there's been a lot of interest in that because over the years, one argument has been that uh, healthcare expenditure has been uh, driven partly by pharmaceutical products coming on at high prices onto the market. And currently the Department of Health are looking at how to establish pharmace pharmaceutical prices um, uh, on a value basis, i.e. how you can turn the pharma, how you can relate the pharmaceutical prices into um, uh, some sort of healthcare return. And we're looking at that and the real conclusion that's coming out of that is that you have to relate your um, pharmaceutical price for any current product to future R&D developments and also to any patent system that you've got in place. So there's always a trade-off between how much of the profit ought to be returned to the pharmaceutical company in the form of higher prices so that they can invest in future R&D uh, against how much of the profit might be used inefficiently just to return to uh, shareholders in that sector. So these are the three pieces of work I'm currently engaged in.